Hello and welcome to the Z Hut. I'm Jay and today we're going to take a look at the JQ6500 MP3 players. Now there are two versions of this. The one I have here is the JQ6500 dash, um, what was that? 16P. And there is also another one that works identical to this, except it has a built, it has also along with the built-in memory storage, it has an SD card slot, and that is the JQ6500-20, P. It works the same as this one, except it also, besides having the onboard storage, it'll accept an SD card as well. But for this tutorial, we're just going over the one that only has the internal storage. So I'll show you here it working, um, tell you the pinouts, and then we'll go to the computer and I'll show you how to upload your um, audio to this because unfortunately at the current time, the app for uploading the MP3s to this is not in English. Um, I don't know, Mandarin or whatever they call that language is called. But it's actually pretty easy. The menu is really easy to navigate through. There's only two selections in the whole thing. It's just not in English. Um, but um, I'll show you how to load, load your MP3s onto it. And don't worry, it is really easy to do even though it's not in English. All right, the operating voltage on this is 3.5 volts to 5 volts, maximum 5 volts. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, if you're using a wall wart, it says 5 volts, or you got a phone charger, it says 5 volts. Um, a lot of those will actually, generally, they'll be a little bit more than 5 volts. You put, like, 5.1 volts, you'd probably be okay, but you start getting, you know, 5.2, 5.3, over 5 volts, you're going to damage this thing. It's not going to last very long. The optimum voltage to run this at, I do believe, was 4.2 volts or somewhere in that range, about 4 volts, if possible. I have here a regulated power supply that I built that puts out 5 volts on the money. So we're safe there. Now the basic setup for this to use it is there are 5 key pins that you bring to ground and it'll play the first five um, MP3s that you have on there in whichever order you push. You know, you push the third button, it will play number three. You push button number five, it'll play the fifth one. I only got three buttons hooked up here, um, but it, it'll work with up to five. But you can also, there's a more advanced way to hook this up, and I'll have some links. Uh, look in the description below for this project's web page. You can go there, and there'll be information there. There are other ways to hook this up with um, push buttons with different resistances, and you can make, um, you know, skip the track, play the next, pause, and whatnot. Um, you can also use these with a microcontroller, such as an Arduino, and you can talk to it with the... Um, the TX and RX on here, so serial communication with it, and that even gives you more possibilities to play around with this. So this is really good if um, you know you were using it with um, uh, some kind of decoration or something. You want to add sound effects to it, or maybe you just want to make your own little MP3 player for a project for school or something. Um, the audio output there is a see here I've got here's a drawing of it um, it's not going to all fit on the camera but there is a speaker for mono and this is amplified now it's not very very loud but you can hear it with headphones it'd be even better but then there's a stereo output but you will need to use some kind of amplifier with this I tried hooking the speakers up to it and you hold it right up against your ear you can kind of barely hear it but with um the mono and I'll just push one of the buttons. Now I have the factory um, MP3s that it comes with that are on it. It's in some Chinese, Mandarin, whatever language that is. Um, and I just got a little speaker here. And that's hooked to the mono. It's decent volume. Unfortunately, to if you want to hook an amplifier to this, you should use the stereo. Um, you can, if you know a little bit about what you're doing, 
You can use an amplifier through the mono. The thing is, you can't have common ground. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to use like a one-to-one -one audio transformer. You'd have to go that route to isolate it. Then you could amplify off of it, but it has some decent volume to it. I mean, it's not going to blow any windows out, but it's okay volume. Um, let's see. The only other thing, if you do hook this up and use it with a microcontroller, the RX pin from this to the TX pin of the microcontroller, you need to put a 1 kilo ohm resistor in there so you're not frying anything out the the tx from this to the rx and the microcontroller is fine you don't need to put anything in um, <clears throat> for the push buttons i just put um these are just a few ohm i actually can't even remember like 10 ohm or something like that very low resistance i just put it in there i wasn't sure if this had any built-in internal resistors in there on the key pins just so we're not getting a complete dead short something in there um <clears throat> the data sheet the the particular data sheet for this is in um foreign language but i did find there was a person they had went through and they translated some of it on the web page i will have a link to that there's actually a lot of information on there for how to hook this up and using it other ways besides just using the key pins which i have hooked up here um, for hooking them up, you know, it's just a push button and it brings it down to ground through a resistor. I'm not going to bother showing you schematic, but as you can see here, here's key pin one, two, three, four, and five. So you can have the first five MP3s on it. You can just by bringing it to ground, which however you do that, and then it will play that MP3. All right. Um, <laughs> the build quality on this ain't too bad. I mean, these are cheap. I think I paid like $2 each. It was somewhere in that ballpark. I'd have to look. But they are inexpensive. The ones that come with the SD card slot is just a tiny bit more. For the applications I was doing, I'm going to be using these with microcontrollers to be adding sound effects to stuff. So these are all I needed. Um... I'm not too sure how much storage is on here. You know, this ain't going to be like competing with your um, iPod. Um, I'm sure you're not going to put, you know, a whole bunch of, of long MP3s on here. Um, actually, for the sound effects I'm going to be putting on here, I'll run them through conversion software and drop them their quality down because it's just sound effects or stuff. It isn't like we're playing music, so... All right, um, with that, um, let's go over to the computer, and I will show you how you uh, upload the audio files, your MP3s to this. And then, once again, just remember, look in the description below. You'll find a link to the project's webpage, and on there I'll have links to all the information you could possibly need for using these. So, all right, I'll catch you at the computer in just a second. All right, I got the computer here turned on, ready to go. So I'm going to plug the module into the USB plug right now. And this is the little window that will come up. But we want to run this here, the run music download dot execute. So we'll click that. And here is the, <coughs> the upload tool. Now, I don't know. They, they've got some stuff in English here, but not here. I'm not too sure what the person that designed this was thinking. As you can see, we got two tabs here. The first one and the second one. So this is really easy. <laughs> you're going to go and click on the second tab. Then you're going to click this button right here. Then um, just choose. I've got here some sound effects that I downloaded for something else. I was going to be adding them to, so I'm just going to select these since that's what came up. Now you got to load all of the MP3s that you want to put on here at the same time. You can't come back and just add one. If you want to add one, you've got to re-add all the ones that you had before. And also you are going to need to download them 
on here, have them arranged in the order that you want them to be in. So let's see here, I'll move them around, say that's what I, the order I wanted them in right there. So then I will select them all, click open, it has them all right here. Then click on this first tab again and click that button right there. And the thing is not super fast. It's going to take a minute or two. Um, you'll see this progress bar will start moving here eventually. Um, there we go. And these files that I just put on here, they're pretty small to, to boot. So, yeah, this thing ain't, ain't going to be working at warp speed. But that's all there is to it. Um, even though it's not in English, like I said, it is still pretty simple. So, all right. Um, I can't think of anything else. Uh, let's see. I wonder. Check here. That would be this one here. Properties. All right. This is the drive I have plugged in. And it says 138. Hmm. I don't know. That seems kind of small. Um, well, that might just be the program that's on here, that, that uploader, because that's built right into the device. You do not have to download that installer. When you plug it in, you just run it, and I would have to say this has more than 138. Um, I could be wrong. That might be all that's in there. But, um, yeah, that just seems too low. Unfortunately, you know, the data sheet, it's, I found two of them, and they were not in English. There was nothing on there that was understandable. Um, you maybe I don't have it loaded on my computer, but I know you can translate some web pages. So, hey, if you have any luck with that, um, or you find out how much storage this actually has, leave a comment. Um, I'm sure everybody'd be interested to know. So, all right, with that, um, let's just wrap this video up. Um, don't forget to uh, give us a thumbs up if this information was useful. And um, all, all the additional information, stuff I was talking about, just look in the description below. You'll find a link to this project's webpage. There will be links on there to where you can get these. And also I'll have that uh, website that I ran across. The person did a pretty good job. They've got a lot of information on this and how to set it up. You'll find that on there as well. So, all right. Well, thank you for joining us here at the Z-Hut today. I hope you have a great day. And remember, have fun building.